I'm Adder Khan, and I'm here with Mr. Paul Ferreira. He's the candidate for the upcoming election in uh, October 6th for the NDP. And we just want to talk to him and get to know him a little bit, understand what he's going to do for us here in York Southwestern. And so we're going to be doing a series of different videos, trying to get to know Mr. Paul Ferreira a little bit better and to know why you guys should vote for him. So without further ado, Mr. Paul Ferreira, how are you? How are you, Adder? Pretty good. So first, let's just start by asking you, uh, why do you, what do you think you can bring to the table for the people of York Southwest? Well, I think our riding needs an energetic, activist, vigorous representation to the United States Supreme Court. I have that experience. I represented this riding in the past. I look forward to going back to the Park after October 6th with the support of the folks who are called this riding home. Okay. And sir, what do you, what do you, can you give us some specifics that you want to do that people can say, okay, Mr. Ferrer is going to actually do this, this, and this? Well, our, our priority, my priority, and his priority, is to work on making life more affordable for the people who call this on us. How do we do that? I think we have in place right now a very unfair 13% HST harmonized sales tax. It isn't some fair, it's a tax on essentials. Essentials like hydro and heating and gas for the car. We're committed to taking the provincial portion of that tax off those daily essentials, reduce your hydro bill, reduce your home heating bill, and these reduce the amount of money you pay at the pumps when you go to fill up your car. Those ideas would save the average uh, uh, York Southwestern household $25 to $30 a month. That's a start towards making life a little bit more affordable and how helpful it may get to me. And that, in my opinion, is the number one issue with this election. And, sir, a lot of people say that it doesn't matter who you vote for, it's all going to end up the same. So, what do you think uh, kind of is your unique uh, peculiarity where you will do something where some the other candidate will not? Well, it's, it's not about uh, voting and getting the same results every time. When I was elected in this riding in 2007, it actually led to an increase in the minimum wage. It was because folks in this riding got out to vote for me and the NDP that we saw the government react. So when we have uh, NDP representation at Queen's Park, things do get done. I want to go back to Queen's Park and take up the fight, not just for making life more affordable, but also to work on improving public transit in this part of the city, making sure the tenants are protected from bad landlords, and to ensure that seniors get the proper level of support, especially those who wish to remain in their homes. Those are all issues that I care about. Those are issues that I'll champion as the MPP for this area. And I think that's the kind of thing that sets me apart from the other candidates. And I say to people, do get out to vote. It does make a difference, a positive difference for our community. Okay. So you mentioned the affordable uh, because of the HST thing, the seniors thing. But what about the youth? Because a lot of youth don't vote right now. And if they were to vote, uh, it would make a significant change in the election uh, results. Uh, what could you say to the youth that would get them invigorated and get them not to uh, talk about the, the, the key thing for young people is uh, opportunities for education for um, I've been uh, speaking out uh, regarding the, uh, the public projects that have been coming through this riding, specifically the Eglinton Light Rail Transit. I'd like to see a set number of jobs on that project be set aside for young people in this community to give them a skill, give them a trade. And these are portable things. That once that, that experience, that job is completed, they can take it elsewhere and they can continue to support themselves and their families in the case maybe. On the education side, we must look at making post-secondary education affordable. Right now it's not. A full year of college is $3,000 in tuition. A full year of university is at least $6,000. That is beyond the means of many working families that live in this riding. But we're sa what I'm saying is let's make post-secondary education affordable. I think that begins with a tuition freeze, and we can look at other remedies in, in uh, the future. But one of the things that trouble me, troubles me right now is that in terms of per capita student funding, Ontario right now is dead last. Tenth out of ten provinces. And we've got to fix that. That's an NDP. Uh, priority uh, in the coming election and beyond. Uh, okay, the last question. Um, there's only so much you can talk about the candidates, and you have a great history. You've done a lot of things. You plan to do a lot more things. But what can you say about the parties that the NDP party that separates the NDP from the other party that people should say, hey, NDP is a good idea because? Well, because we've always been on the side of, of working people. Uh, the NDP, uh, you know, goes back a very long time, and in this riding, we've had great NDP and prior to the NDP CCF representation. Um, these are uh, our folks, myself included, who don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. And uh, my commitment is to make this riding, which is a riding that I call home, uh, as good a place to live, work, and play as we possibly can. It involves a lot of hard work, 
It's a long way to go still, but I'm committed to uh, seeing it through, and I look forward to earning the vote of your Southwestern voters on October 6th. Terrific. Mr. Fura, thank you so much for being with us, and uh, we'll continue to do these uh, videos and follow your campaign. Thanks very much, Adder, for, uh, for engaging me in this dialogue, and I look forward to hearing folks watching this uh, online. Absolutely. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you so much.